This is a question I recently got in the comments from one of my subscribers. Is it bad to have one cat? Been wondering if my kitty needs company. Good question. Thank you for that. It's probably a question that many cat owners that only have one cat are asking themselves. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at the question if you should get a second cat if you only have one. Welcome to Nine Lives to Live where I work with my three cats, Calypso, Skyfall, and Mr. Muffin to help you improve the lives of your indoor cats. So there's a lot of anecdotal information on whether or not it's good to get a second cat, a companion for your cat, whether it's going to cause more stress or if it's going to actually be better for the cat. So I wanted to dig into that a little bit and find out what do the studies say and I also did my own little survey in a Facebook group on cats that I belong to. This is the question that I asked in my Facebook group. Has anyone here gotten a second cat because the first one was lonely? Why did you think your cat needed a companion and did it work? I got 90 responses and I was actually surprised by the results. Let me start by saying that there is no blanket answer for everyone. Everybody's home situation is different and cats have different personalities as we all know. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that we can probably guess what the odds are that your second cat will be successfully integrated into your house. But the first question really is, do cats get lonely? And if they get lonely, how can you tell if your cat is lonely and needs a companion? Keep in mind that we are talking about indoor cats, not indoor outdoor cats that have a whole secondary set of relationships outside of our houses. Now our modern domestic cats did evolve from African wild cats, which are solitary hunters, but our kitties are no longer just that. Today's stray cats and feral cats tend to live in family groups around a particular food source. They live in female-led family groups that groom each other, that uh, sleep together, that huddle together in the winter when it's cold. And in general, they do not like outsiders and chase them away. Now, when we adopt cats and bring them inside our homes, they transfer some of those relationships from their family groups to us as people. What do you want? So they are not the solitary creatures that the many people think they are. They actually depend on the relationships they have. And if you are their primary relationship, they will depend on that relationship and they will get lonely if you are not around. So how attached are cats to their people? I know that my three cats will tend to gather around wherever I am in a particular room. They will also be waiting by the windows when I come home if I've been away. I know the dogs are known to do this, but I think cats also do it. In one study done by Oregon State University researchers, a cat named Lila and her owner were placed in a room. When her owner left, the cat started circling around and showing anxiety, wondering where her owner were, was. She wandered to the door and meowed 61 times in the span of two minutes. When her owner returned and she was sure that uh, the owner was going to stay, stay around, then she started exploring the room, looking around, playing with some of the toys because she felt comfortable. So modern indoor cats depend on us for things they normally would depend on the outside for. Things like entertainment, for grooming, for social interaction. Now we try to provide all those things for them, but sometimes we can't. We can't be attentive to them 24 seven. And sometimes we have obligations that take us away or outside of our homes. This is when a second cat, a cat companion might be the answer for you. Now here are some signs that your cat might be lonely along with some comments that I got from my Facebook group. They might over groom showing bald spots or irritated skin. Here's a comment. My kids and I were back and forth from one state to the other for about two months. Our cat started having anxiety and licking herself raw. I took her to the vet and he asked if there had been changes and the only thing I could think of was we were back and forth a lot. We brought a kitten home about five months later and he keeps her busy. We can leave for the weekend and she's just fine. I think it helped her not to be lonely. A second issue, meowing loudly. This many times will happen at night. It's their way of calling you, especially if the bedroom door is closed. Here's what someone said in my small survey. Yes, I had my boy for two months before we had to get him a friend. The poor babe would walk around the house howling. I'd of course give him lots of attention, but I could, couldn't give him attention 24 seven. 
I got him a sibling and it took about one to two weeks for him to warm up to her. He hissed, growled, and swatted at her a lot, but when, then they were golden. They became the absolute best friends. It was truly amazing. A third sign of loneliness might be acting out, scratching a lot at the furniture or knocking things over when you're not there. Here's a comment. I did it and my first cat who was, uh, let's say jerk, became the sweetest, happiest gentleman. Another sign is acting aggressive, swatting or lashing out unexpectedly. Here are a couple of comments. She was just attacking my legs and I was on the verge of rehoming her. Brought in another cat and it was the best decision ever. Another one. Yep, my mom suggested it because my cat would not leave me alone at night. If I left my bedroom door open, he'd pounce on my face, paw at me, meow, etc. Not my husband or kid, only me. If we closed the door, he'd yowl for hours. My mom suggested a friend and it worked beautifully. Lethargy or depression. Here's a comment. My kitty wasn't playing as much and just sleeping more often after a couple of months. So I got another baby. After the initial adjustment period, they are so much happier and play and cuddle each other. Grooming is another comfy thing for cats that they can do for each other. We have a third now and it's even more fun for all of them. Here are a few other signs that you should be watching out for. If they were used to another cat, they might search around for it. I have also read that loneliness can cause throwing up, changes to their eating habits, and litter box problems. Now, it's important to note that all of these problems can be caused by reasons other than loneliness. So one of the things that you need to do if your cats start to exhibit these symptoms is take it to the vet and see if there's any physical problem before you start working on the loneliness issue. So is the second cat the answer? Maybe. In my own unscientific survey of 90 responses, 70 of them had a positive experience. 11 of them had a negative experience and nine of them had a neutral experience. I found that very surprising. I would have expected more negative experiences. I was really surprised that 90% had positive or neutral experiences in adding another cat to their household. The ones with a positive experience, which totaled about 78%, said that in general, the symptoms were relieved and everybody seemed a lot happier. Here are a couple of comments. We got our first cat and she was so active and wanted to play at all hours, especially at night. So we decided to get her a friend so that she had someone to get her zoomies out with and it has worked out so well. Of course, the introduction period between them took some time, but do it the right way. Don't rush it and it'll work out. They love each other and we don't regret it at all. Here's another one. I rescued a cat at eight years old and thought she was experiencing some symptoms of loneliness. She lived in a house with two other cats before I got her. We got her a kitten, which is now two years old. She's now 10 and they love each other. So glad we made the decision to get another one. Now the ones with a negative experience, about 12% found that their cats did not get along at all. And in general, everybody was worse off. Here are a few of their comments. It didn't work. Both ended up miserable. The little male was a super happy, playful little guy, and the female was at least used to other cats quite confident. Now we're having fights, growling, protecting food, stressful behavior, anxious roaming, etc. in our home on a daily basis. Another comment. Yes, worst decision we made. She hates the two boy kittens and her whole personality towards us has changed. Avoid. A third one. Yep. Got a second one and my first one absolutely hates him. A year later, still no change. My first one's not her happy, playful self anymore. She just does her own thing and avoids him because he bullies her. So you need to consider the possibility that your cat is just fine and bringing uh, in a second cat will just cause disruption. The neutral set, which is about 10%, said that basically the cats ignored each other and nobody was better or worse off. Here's a typical comment. Yep, we thought our cat would like a friend. Turns out she doesn't. And now I have two cats that tolerate one another as long as they stay on their sides of the house. But is there more to this story? Have scientific studies actually been done that can help us figure this thing out? The answer is yes, but it's actually hard for the research to get the data because cats are difficult to study. Here's the experience of researcher Peter Pongratch from Etfos Lorand University in Budapest. I know I butchered that pronunciation. Sorry about that. He's talking about uh, trying to research with cats in the lab. In less than a minute, it escaped into an air duct. We were terrified. 
we had to wait for an hour for it to come back. For some reason, I think that's really funny. I don't know why, but it just, these researchers waiting for the cat to come out of the air duct, I think it's hilarious. By the way, I will put uh, references to all the studies I mentioned in the description below in case you wanna look at them yourself and see what the full article or abstract said. But we do have some information. In a study published in the Journal of Feline Medicine and Surgery uh, called Are Multi-Cat Homes More Stressful? They found out a few things. In this study, they found that these were the important factors. How you care for them, how much you change their surroundings, how used they are to people, how you get them used to other cats, and the general stability of your cat family. The same study also suggested that these factors also make a difference. Outdoor access, amount of indoor space available, the number of litter trays, the amount of time alone, the number of people in the house, human activity in the house, the environment, the breed, the sex, the age, and the neutering status of the cats. They also pointed out that socialization history with other cats is important, by which I understand it to mean is how you introduce them and how they got along with other cats in the past. In another study published in Applied Animal Behavior Science called Intercat Aggression in Households Following the Introduction of a New Cat, they surveyed 375 people about their experience when adopting a cat from a local shelter. Out of the people that responded, about half reported fighting between the two cats when they were introduced to each other. But I'm gonna add something to that and I'm gonna quote it very specifically because this is critical. Approximately half of the people introduced the cats into the home by simply putting the cats together immediately. That's right, half the people reported fighting and half the people reported having no introduction time. So this is our big takeaway, I think, from all of these studies is that the introduction is critical and introducing your cats slowly to each other and understanding how they behave in the wild is important to your success in having a second cat brought into your home. Now, the easiest way to avoid most of these problems is by getting two litter mates at the same time. They already know each other and will not have to learn how to get along. But things are not always that easy. Your circumstances might not allow you to immediately get two cats, or one of your cats might get lost, or one of your cats might get sick and die. So it's not always easy to find a permanent solution, and you might find yourself in a situation where you have one lonely cat. One question to consider is how well has your cat gotten along with other animals in the past if it has come into contact with them? How does it react to cats that it might see out of doors through the window? Does it hiss? Does it get anxious? Does it start wandering around? Does it begin to mark? Do they hiss and growl or do they look curious and interested? If you're going to get a second cat, it's also important to consider their age. If you have an older cat, a kitten might not be the best solution because the kitten will have a lot of energy and might actually bother the other cat trying to play with it. On the other hand, if you have a younger cat, kittens tend to be more flexible and older cats tend to accept kittens more easily. It's hard to know when you're getting a cat from a shelter what its temperament is or even sometimes what its age is. But if you are getting your cat from a breeder, uh, you should ask how that particular breed gets along with other cats. A cat that has been alone for years and years might simply be used to that and will not want another cat. That's something to also consider. When I got Mr. Muffin, my cats Calypso and Skyfall were already a bonded pair, but they accepted Mr. Muffin very readily because he was just a tiny little kitten. There was a little bit of hissing and uh, swatting, but for the most part, there was no problem. But older cats need homes also. And so if you have an older cat that seems to be displaying signs of loneliness, not getting a kitten and getting an older cat with a little bit less energy might be the solution. You're just gonna to have to take it a little bit more slowly and introduce them a little bit more gently. Unfortunately, it is impossible to know how long it'll take for cats to get to know each other and to get along with each other. Uh, it could take a few days, it could take a month, or it could be never, as we found out from some of our comments. Now, some people suggest that there's too much risk involved in bringing a second cat into your household, that you should just leave things the way they are. But I disagree. 
I think that if your cat, even if it's an older cat, is showing signs of loneliness, whether it's over grooming or acting out or howling, you should try to bring another cat into your household and see if they can get along. And I think based on uh, both the surveys and the study that I did on my Facebook group, the odds that you will succeed are better than the odds that you will fail. And the most important factor in that success is a proper introduction. But this video has gone on long enough and I'm not going to go into that, but I will post a video uh, on that very topic somewhere around here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please uh, like, share, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.